Hello traders, welcome to Free FreeFX. My name is Francesco Sani and today is Thursday the 12th of November 2015. Um, my disclaimer there, just to give you a chance to reflect on what you're about to see and um, the topic of the day. Managing long-term trades. I've covered actually this topic before and under the video for position trading, but today really it's about uh, managing long-term trades in the context of the three um, instruments that I've been trading um, for the last, you know, since the summer and beyond. And this is really uh, a reflection of, uh, obviously, my trading style as it's been developing in the last three years. I'm a retail, retail trader, so I trade for myself. And this is really uh, very much a reflection of my own limited experience. But I hope that it will be of value to anybody who is in a similar position and just maybe trading this uh, particular set of instruments. But if you do trade Forex, um, maybe this video is for you. I hope. So uh, just very briefly, I'll start with the conversation with the uh, pound kiwi. The pound kiwi here is the uh, one instrument, uh, the one pair that I've been following for um, more than a year now, and it does has provided me with a lot of um, wins. Um, but um, I've actually changed my approach um, since uh, sort of before the summer and started really trading it long term because I think. That is where this is heading. So um, there are two reasons why I, I chose this pair. One is because um, I've been trading the pound against the euro. And the one other trade that I have on is a short euro pound. You can see that the euro pound has been making uh, quite some substantial losses. So if you measure this, you'll see it's of 400 pips. And that's since the uh, middle of October. So basically in the last month, that's how much it's lost. Um, it isn't quite a, a big mover compared to the pound Kiwi, but it's a steadier mover because if you look at um, what it's been achieving with a, a weekly chart, for example, you can see that the, uh, the bigger trend, you know, since uh, the great financial crisis, it's been to the downside. Okay. And if you put, if you wanted to put some lines to it, you could see quite clearly that it was that sort of a, a that sort of a pair um, just quite basic lines like these and show you exactly what I mean okay you can even make it a channel if you wanted to but that's really where we are so this 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 pair really interests me because it has this uh, potential of um, of making returns over time and certainly doesn't cause you as much um, stress or heartache because it's in a way it's a safe pair with the ECB maintaining its um, maintaining its uh, quantitative easing policy, downgrading the, the euro and trying to make things cheaper for exports and to kickstart the uh, economic recovery. Um, certainly, you can see that we've sort of reached the top at this point in 2013, um, and we've come down for a very sort of slow but steady fall down to February 2015 and we've not really moved far off this bottom which suggests that either we're going to move back up and one of my um, articles back I think it was 2014 was uh, a cycle where this was going to go back up to this channel so it was going to be uh, a huge climb or at least a thousand uh, pips up to the top of this channel, if not higher still. So um, that was one of my theories, but I've been sort of, through the year, I've been looking at the euro and the pound. And I think the pound is definitely a stronger currency. Uh, and this has sort of made me rethink about that particular theory. And indeed trading sometimes is about rethinking your theories. Just because you're wrong, it doesn't mean that uh, your theory in the first place didn't have any validity or any reason to be. Um, at this point, uh, the, the pound is the stronger of the two currencies, also against the Kiwi, 
because going back to our Q week pound, you can see even on the weekly calendar, sorry, weekly chart, that the, the calendar of events we've had so far, with the pound sort of not uh, speaking hawkishly about its rate rise in, this, in the near future, has not stopped this pair from uh, from rising quite a bit. From April of 2015, uh, it went, you know, from uh, 193 okay, to this, essentially, 253. Okay. So, that's 6,000 pips. It's a huge climb. Now I'm um, I'm as speechless as anybody who hadn't spotted this until after sort of midway through this trend. Um, but I'm what I'm speechless about is the fact that uh, I certainly uh, really value this, this pair because it does, um, in spite of the pound's recent um, dovishness, um, it does actually represent a view of the pound which is um, to the extreme end uh, because although the kiwi uh, has been losing against the dollar quite steadily as you can see on the daily chart of the kiwi dollar since here in uh, July 2014 uh, 0 0.89 0 0.88 we come down to a low here in August of this year of 0 0.62 okay that's 2,600 pips okay, in the space of a year. So it's kind of been moving like the euro pound steadily down from this top. Uh, and there's certainly more room to move further down because if you look at the weekly chart, you can see where we are. But uh, we certainly have more room downwards. Now, you might say that this is a long term uptrend, and certainly I've been devising that in previous videos so that this represents a line and we come to the bottom of it just like on the weekly calendar you can see that we've come to the uh, top okay of this channel at the moment in the pound using the dollar and we bounced off it but um, the previous bounces were quite more dramatic I think this might be uh, potentially less of a bounce but I could be wrong so I have to wait and see so let's go to the topic of, we're halfway through the video, so let's go to the topic itself, the topic du jour, which is the uh, managing long-term long -term trades. So how did it get into long-term trading? This is really on this pair particularly, because I saw that the potential in this was over time to gain uh, a lot of traction and maybe have some corrections like this. In fact, when it got to these levels, it started to, to, it started to feel the feeling started to sink in that it was going to, it was going to be too good to be true. This was going to correct at some point. Uh, I didn't know when. This was the uh, the huge candle that we had on the um, on the day that the uh, the, the so-called Black Monday on the twenty fourth of August, and um, so this really made it um, made it clear when this candle retreated all the way up from two fifty three. Okay, all the way down to 237 that um, that's 1600 pips by the way so when that retreated in a day like that it made it clear that there was obviously going to be a struggle to get further up there was some kind of resistance here or um, some orders that didn't allow this to progress further and sure enough we came to this level of 245 246 and there was a uh, resistance and uh, Supply sellers came in and came back down to here, okay, with 225. Now, I've been long since basically uh, Black Monday. Um, I closed one trade over 500 pips in profit and I re entered because I thought um, that once you've broken through the 240 area, which had been resistance as you can see for a number of weeks, uh, we would basically close the day above it and continue higher. That didn't happen well it sort of went in my favor for a little bit and then it came back down i stayed with that trade can you believe from that week in august and we're in november 
So managing that has been a, a learning experience for me because I've, I've looked at my uh, account essentially uh, dwindling in terms of the equity um, all the way down to about um, a maintenance margin of about 60% of the total. And the, um, the outcome of that was that I had basically not just this trade on, obviously, under two trades, one a euro pound short from the 17th of July. Um, this particular trade, the euro pound, uh, came down to about 500 pips against me. And currently, as we speak, it's only 120, I say only, but um, about 120 pips against me. This trade here, the pound kiwi, uh, went about 2,100 pips against me at its uh, height of this correction here, down on 225. And now we're at uh, 232, nearly 233. Uh, we, I am uh, under 1,200 pips uh, drawdown on this trade, negative profit loss. So from 2,100 to 1,200 is 900 pips of that drawdown that's been reduced. So my risk exposure on this trade is reducing. My risk exposure on the euro pound is also reduced by about 350 to 400 pips. And my final trade is the FTSE 100, which is a UK 100 shares index. And that's also been uh, reduced. Okay, You can see how much it's fallen uh, just today. But um, essentially, I entered this trade short um, around here, okay, the 26th of August, so very close to the pound kiwi, uh, and it was just under the 6,000 6, level because I, I thought this was going to break and continue through. But like the S&P 500, there was a rally, and it went against me by about 500 pounds again, and it stopped here at 6,500. And it's down to 6,180 at the moment. So um, that's shared about 300 uh, of its negative profit loss. So overall, I've gone from uh, about 3,000, uh, 3,100 and something pips to about 1,500 pips. So I basically almost halved my negative profit loss. Uh, sitting on these trades from uh, between the uh, middle of July to late August, where I entered the three trades. So if you think of time from the middle of July to nearly the middle of November, that's four months. So four months sitting on one trade and then uh, three months sitting, almost three months sitting on the other two trades. Okay. So um, if you think of those negative 3,000 odd pips over, say, four months, um, it's, you know, it's spread out. It, it begins to make sense. But what you need to look at, obviously, is how to manage uh, profits once they start coming in. So when you've been in, in the red so long, because maybe you entered, quote unquote, too soon, depending on what you mean by too soon, for me, that was the right time to enter, okay? Because anything that was deviating from those levels to me was a temporary bounce or correction. So I didn't see any reason to come out and re-enter and be manic about it. So um, you have to think what your strategy is. So, uh, and there's a difference between accepting a, a loss and actually taking that step of accepting a loss because it's part of your plan. So. Even if you're not in a in a loss situation, you know you're going to because you you're spanning such a huge amount of pips of movement that that, that is part of the, of this game position trading. So, so my target is overall these three trades about six thousand pips. So you can see how it's going to take time for that to happen, and my trades may not finish at the end of the year neatly at Christmas this year. They may have to continue into next year, but that's part of it. So. I hope this makes sense and if you have any questions please leave comments and I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you on the next free FX video and good luck trading up there. Cheers.